So here we start with my hand moving in x, y coordinate. Yeah. And now if I go closer, the butterfly yeah, seems yeah. closer. And if you go back, it comes backwards. And our goal is to create an augmented reality system with virtually uh, Im image that's able to move back and forth, up and down. And so that we are able to create a real-time user interaction through facial tracking or any mode of uh, user input like hand gesture module as well to cal do things without any calibration or any wearables or use of smartphones. Here you'll be able to see yourself through the one-way mirror and also see inside of it and see a mirror which is at placed 45 degree angle and see a monitor here that's going to be moving up and down. So what we've designed is the indoor navigation system and we designed it from the ground up for the visually impaired. Um, so if you lost your phone at home, how would you find it? You would call it and follow the sound of the rain. We use the exact same principle here, except for arbitrary objects. You would speak into our application and you could say something really simple. You could say, remember this as my wallet. At this point, the system understood that what you're trying to do is remember something and it saves that object's location. Now, you can go back to the system later and you can say to the system, hey, help me find my wallet. And now it's gonna, now it starts, it started the video that's gonna find the, help the user find their wallet. The system will understand what the underlying intent of the user is and detect that the user is talking about a thing called the wallet that they earlier saved. When you say, remember my wallet, what it's doing is it's actually saving that XYZ coordinate so that at a later time when you say, find my wallet, it's uh, picking up that XYZ coordinate and comparing it to where you currently are. Hi, we're the Nerve Band team and we're trying to make a new smartwatch input interface based on EMG signal detection. EMG signal is basically signal produced whenever your muscle contract. Your muscle needs to contract for you to make any type of gestures and these contractions are pretty unique so, we're, so the signal they produce is also unique. So basically we have four columns and we have four simple gestures, different pinches on your, on your hands. So do the index pinch, you'll see that the first column is being selected and do another pinch you'll see the second column, and this is how you select different letters. Yeah, and after you select the letters, uh, you can send it over to, the, to another person's phone. Basically, this is controlling the watch to display uh, the letter onto the screen, and then when you do a swipe, it'll automatically be sent to the phone number. So our project is the, the attempt to recolor black and white images. Uh, it has applications in uh, black and white photo restoration, as well as mood restoration and MRI imaging and astronomy. We also have a, uh, something called a discriminator in, adi in addition to the original network, which is just a generator. And so this discriminator, it tries to be an art critic. It says, is this image realistic? Rather, rather than, is this exactly the same as what was produced, or what, was it, what was that the target was? So here we have a sky colorizer and we'll input this uh, image of a horse. And uh, we can simultaneously put in, say, like an image of a flower uh, into our flower colorizer. Yeah, so you can see that the, the horse is brown and that the flower, it, it's some acceptable color. You can see some greens in here, um, which, are, which are actually very close to the real color. Uh, yellow is an acceptable color for this plant. Uh, it's not the original color, but that's not really the point of our project. So our project is a low-cost spectrum analyzer, um, which can also be used as software to find radio. So the, the motivation is that you can buy cheap oscilloscopes and other lab equipment, but you cannot buy a cheap spectrum analyzer. So there's the market that we wanted to exploit, um, and that's what we made this device. So for our uh, project, we designed a PCB um, that has all the front-end uh, analog components, and it has an ADC that finally digitizes the signal sends over to the PCB, oh, sorry, to the FPGA. The FPGA does signal processing on the, um, on the signals received, and then it sends using a USB 2.0 high-speed chip to a PC where you do FFT and display it on the screen. Or for software-defined radio, you can demodulate the signals and then it could be analog or digital demodulation. You can listen to the signals or do whatever you want. So this is a um, 100 gigabits per second quasi-CML Seagate by CMOS digital library project. The idea behind this is to make um, standard cells uh, to be used by other circuit designers uh, to build their circuits uh, faster. Um, what we have done is we have built uh, basic cells uh, such as uh, inverters, AND gates, latches, uh, emitter followers, and uh, we have put them together into a test circuit that is uh, generating uh, clock signals 
and uh, this circuit is to test the functionality and prove the concept uh, of our library. This is our project. Our project is a 360 degree camera on the moving robot. So um, this, the purpose for this project is to send to the, the robot to somewhere that nobody wants to go or the or human couldn't reach. So this is our prototype. We are using four different ca normal cameras uh, on this robot so uh, it could capture the images of the, all the surroundings of, of the robot. And, uh, we can, and this robot can be controlled wirelessly, so we can, can send this robot to anywhere we want. Uh, we can see the real-time stitched result like that. And uh, we can also record video and play it back. So our project is to create a micro-optomechanical sensor. And what that means is it's a mechanical sensor that detects vibrations using optical light signals. And so we have our sensor here, and if uh, you probably won't be able to catch it on the camera, but there's a very small line there that actually is a cantilever. And as we shake it, we can see that the waveform that we detect on the output oscilloscope is changing. And if I shake it faster, you can see that it detects a whole range of frequencies. And then as we uh, excite it, it'll shake, and the light that's passing through the cantilever will be modulated and then we measure that modulation in here. So it's a completely optical system. It's not electronic, so it can be applied to places like high voltage areas where electronic components might not be able to be uh, inserted and detected. And basically we can also have optical fiber connect to it so it can be deployed over long distances with limited loss. So, so basically what we have is portable neonatal healthcare. Um, it's aimed at treating neonates in low resource areas uh, where there's a lack of medical care and electricity. So what we have is set up is a solar panel into a battery pack um, that powers various medical devices and various sensors. And it also powers a communication system and a user interface system, uh, which is very simple to use and also meant for people who don't have much medical knowledge. So Anna's going to get her pulse checked and her, uh, her oxygen content. So right now it's doing a few samples. So it's taking five different samples in order to average out the results and make sure that it's as accurate as possible. Turns out you came down with jaundice, which is uh, when uh, you have a buildup of a molecule in your blood and it causes some yellowing of the skin. It's usually not harmful, but if it builds up in your bloodstream, it'll actually cause brain damage. So uh, what you do is you put a baby under uh, blue LEDs. So blue, uh, blue light of a certain wavelength will help break the molecule down. There are plenty of other sensors that you could integrate into the box and, and different treatment devices and diagnostic devices that you could use. Our goal was not to develop those medical devices, but to provide the infrastructure for that so that if someone does develop something, you can bring it to this box and, and integrate it in, right?